Sorry. Launch Vipers. Vipers, clear to launch. That's really what we believe that the broadcaster, the role of the carrier will in become increasingly important as we go forward beyond numbers, beyond ac uh, acquisitions and more in the space of technology where they empower the broadcaster who brings more engaging content. The uh, carrier brings the, uh, the, the powered technology device and that, that with that we can create or we can, uh, we can make for more engaging uh, communication, more engaging content and make our uh, consumers more engaged and more curious. So we own their curiosity. Uh, but having said that, like I said earlier, that uh, there is a borderless exchange of content and content will move out eventually from one space into the other, into other platforms. And uh, the, uh, one of the most uh, successful examples uh, in recent times was when uh, Dabang was actually uh, first launched, uh, was launched on YouTube as a full-fledged film. And uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, while it, it delivered about, in the first month, 5.5 million views, uh, the interesting thing is that there was some kind of a uh, technical uh, paperwork issue uh, for which there was a delay in this uh, activity. But according to uh, YouTube, they were, they were to launch it uh, on YouTube before the television launch. Now, understand if that happens, what would be the power if a film is coming first on YouTube before it goes on to TV? That would take away from TV, that's when, that's when that medium needs to worry. And that's when this medium will start, that YouTube will start attracting audiences which, are, which they have never attracted before because this, uh, this kind of genre, this kind of movie will attract an audience which is primarily a television audience, not really a digital or a, a, a new media audience. So that's really the power of when content moves away, how, how, will the, how will it change the profile and the engagement of audiences? The other one example is for an initiative that we did for a client of ours. So I'm going to show you the video soon. And it was uh, content that we put on a device of a uh, housewife's uh, uh, device of comfort, which is the mobile phone. And uh, it, it really generated a large amount of numbers. And I'm going to show you the video first and then talk about it a bit.
brands like Annapurna or this category in general and the FMCG brands to address these audiences would have typically earlier selected the more uh, time-tested options of doing a something similar where you can do the test even as a quiz in a, in a women's magazine, you can do it in newspaper supplements. But we chose this option and created the content on this device because of that, because the device is something of comfort to her. So the de uh, device of comfort, she's very at ease with this device and we felt that the, the kind of response and the numbers we got was largely because of the device and not just the content that we were putting out. And uh, like I said earlier, that uh, the face of access is changing and we can access in whatever devices. Look what Scrabble, for example, is doing. The Almost every device that you or anyone you know is comfortable with, they have an option for you. And uh, 10 years, exactly 10 years ago, when BMW put out its uh, first uh, uh, films, which it did not put on television and put it on, uh, on, uh, on the internet, and what were they doing? They were also trying to own the curiosity of the consumers to go there and watch. 10 years ago, this is how they did it. If they were in today's age, we wonder how they would have done it. Um, so that's really about uh, uh, taking advertising uh, into the area more of content. But we also talked about the second part is that the content needs to go social. We need to generate conversations around it because, like we said, for this audience, their peer sets and their friends have more credibility than the experts like, uh, like our marketers. So what are the implications for us if we take, it, uh, if we take uh, our content more social? Now, one of the things is that uh, it doesn't, you don't anymore play in, in, a, uh, in a silo of just this is marketing, this is uh, PR, this is corporate, this is pr production design, product design, etc. When you take your content social, or when you take your communication social, the kind of messaging, the kind of conversations that you can pick up can give you leads for any part of the, 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 of the organization. And therefore, it becomes about a bigger organization uh, effort or input that you get and goes beyond marketing. Uh, for example, uh, and one of the DTH guys uh, had launched uh, an, a very successful launch of their uh, DTH platform. And uh, within a few days, they realized they were hit a block, but they couldn't figure out what the issue was until someone picked it up on one of the social uh, networks, the conversations, saying that, uh, uh, that, that his wife was having a problem because um, while, while, the, while this is a platform she very much would like to buy into, uh, the call center only has an English option. So they really communicated back to their call center people who then uh, put it up in multilingual languages. But these are the kind of conversations and the advantages that you get for the corporation beyond just the marketing initiative that you have set out to do. And that's one of the advantages. The other one is you can also engage, we're talking about curiosity, you can engage your audiences into your marketing uh, uh, initiatives uh, or pricing initiatives. In this case, when Toyota launched their uh, cruiser, they asked people to go up on the site and to, uh, to click on like. And every time they click the like button, they drop the price of the, of the cruiser by $5. So the more people who went up, the more people benefited, but it also so created a lot of interest on, and conversations there because people were talking and asking their friends to uh, uh, click even if they weren't part, even if they weren't intending to buy just so that the guy who was going to buy got the benefit of the price. Uh, the other one is that, and this is something that most of us in the business have struggled with, maybe uh, we put so much of time, effort, energy and our budget into a launch and we do a pre-build up to the launch but post that launch it's very hard for us that all what we appropriated and all what we garnered in the launch to actually maximize or, uh, the, or, or increase the tail of our communication and, and the conversations and maintain them beyond the, the big bang launch that we do. When you take your, your activation social, you are able to much more successfully uh, extend the tail of your communication and you can go from mobilizing conversations about your launch, you can eventize it in a big way, but you can also sustain and maintain and benefit by, by the a longer tail. Uh, the other benefit, and that's nothing really to, uh, I mean, it's a no-brainer to talk about it, is the real-time access to data that you get, cost correction, research that comes in is rich in data, but uh, research takes a lot of time for, for actually getting the data. It takes you a long time after you've done an initiative to get your data to actually uh, take a cost-corrective action on that information, but through social, you are able to make 
in, in uh, changes which are which are uh, of course not long term but where which can be changed at a much faster pace because you're picking up the conversations and the information like i said in the earlier case where we talked about where i talked about the uh, the multilingual um, uh, option for the call centers these kind of information is in real time uh, and the other uh, benefit again for all of us who are doing a lot of uh, uh, analysis in the traditional space of when we communicate and we it's not only about uh, television's relevance and engaging with our audiences but when i develop a tv plan and we are talking about large amount of grps that we generate we really don't know what the impact of that grp is is it a negative or a positive conversation that i've generated so when i'm working on a on uh, on developing a traditional um, media plan and i bring in these elements of social into it i am able to not just see what i've delivered in the traditional space but also what kind of conversations i've actually generated if there is something that i need to uh, take uh, uh, cognizance of and correct and we can we what this really does us it it encourages us to look out of traditional metrics and we believe therefore that going forward um, none of us think that in the short term or in the foreseeable short term that the grp cprp game is going to die away that's not what we are saying but we feel that that the basket of metrics of how we, we evaluate the performance of a communication is going to get extended so you will have you'll continue having the messages that you'll be evaluating or measuring yourselves on the number of grps put there but you will also measure yourselves on the kind of experiences that you gave your audience through content that you put out there and the kind of conversations that you delivered because of the uh, taking that content into the social space and that's really a uh, 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 quick sum up of, uh, of what i have to say today so the whole thought for us that i want to leave you with is that you need to own in this in this new changing space own the curiosity of the consumer because that's going to change the game that's it thank you <laughs>